some news breaking from the Vatican. Uh, the working document guiding the next phase of the Synod on Synodality, the so-called continental stage, was released this week, titled, Enlarge the Space of Your Tent, a reference from Isaiah. It emphasizes inclusion, particularly the role of women in the church. Despite reports of scant participation in the local surveys relative to the overall Catholic population, the document seems to imply that whole countries are calling for the ordination of women to the priesthood. The National Catholic Reporter claims, quote, countries are calling for women's ordination. There's just one small issue. John Paul II said it was impossible for the church to ordain women. We'll discuss all of this with the papal posse, Robert Royal and Father Jerry Murray, next week on The World Over. You do not want to miss that. And on Saturday, the Vatican announced that their agreement with China has been extended for another two years. The provisional agreement was signed in 2018 and renewed in 2020. Since the signing of that agreement, religious freedom has worsened in China. Why extend an agreement a second time? Joining me to discuss this and much more is director of the Center for Religious Freedom at the Hudson Institute, Nina Shea, and president of the Population Research Institute and author of The Bully of Asia, Stephen Mosher. Thank you both for being here. I want to begin with what Cardinal uh, Pietro Parolin, the Vatican Secretary of State, said in an interview on Saturday about the Vatican's decision. Pope Francis, with determination and patient foresight, has decided to continue along this path, not under the illusion of finding perfection in human rules, but in the concrete hope of being able to assure Chinese Catholic communities, even in such a complex context, of the guidance of pastors who are worthy and suitable for the task entrusted to them." End quote. Nina, most of the dioceses have no bishops at this point. And I've received firsthand reports that the bishops the Chinese government have approved are just really government apparatchiks. So how are these men suitable or worthy pastors? Your reaction to the Vatican explanation here? Well, we're losing good men who are bishops. Uh, the, the Vatican rightly says the bishops are the life of the church, so the no. quality is very important. So mm -hmm. we've traded off eight who are either in prison, in detention, or like Cardinal Zen on trial, mm -hmm. political trial, at for six. And uh, that's how many new ones there are. A third of the dioceses are without bishops, as you say. And, and um, you know, you have bishops saying, uh, the new bishops, one of the new bishops from Sichuan, saying uh, he's going to celebrate the birthday party of the Communist Party of China on the solemnity of St. Peter's and Paul in his cathedral and urges the Catholic faithful to come hear the word of the party and receive the grace of the party. So um, this, yeah, this is um, this is a disaster. A disaster, Nina. and um, men who stood up to the bishops, who stood up to the Communist Party, and said, "We're not banning children from prayer. We're not. We're going to teach Christianity, bring them to Christ." Mm -hmm. That man is in detention. Has been for years. No one's seen him. Cardinal Zen prayed for him. Bishop Gia. Um, well, he was free. Now, uh, Bishop uh, Cardinal Zen is uh, caught in uh, in the dock, yeah. literally facing trial. <laughs> facing in, in trial Hong in Hong Kong. Uh, the agreement documents have never been made public. The, the, this Vatican-China agreement, but Vatican officials say it outlines procedures for ensuring that Catholic bishops are elected by the Catholic community in China and approved by the Pope before their ordinations and installations. In the past four years, only six bishops have been named and installed under the terms of this agreement. In his interview, Cardinal Parolin noted that the achievements of the agreement, uh, these are some of the achievements, lifting the excommunications of irregular status of seven bishops who had been ordained with government approval but not the Vatican's consent. He went on to say, many dioceses are still without bishops or very elderly bishops, but the process is continuing. There are dioceses in which, despite all efforts and goodwill, no fruitful dialogue exists with local authorities. Stephen, this sounds like a failed agreement. I mean, the Vatican does not choose the bishops. The CCP does. There are not enough bishops, and the Vatican has been forced to recognize those who have been excommunicated for good reason in most cases. Your thoughts, and what has the Vatican gotten out of this agreement? 
Well, let's go, let's go back to what Pope Francis said several years ago. He said the agreement was uh, signed in order to provide good shepherds for preaching the gospel in China and reestablishing, um, you know, full and, and visible unity in the church. Uh, and, and last month, he said that the commission is going very well. It's going slowly because the Chinese pace is slow. They have an eternity to go forward. There are mm -hmm. people of endless patience. Uh, you know, uh, Pope Francis is not dealing with the Chinese people. Raymond, he's dealing with the Chinese Communist Party, whose leader is a brutal dictator, cut from the same cloth as Mao Zedong, uh, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, all the great monsters of human history. Mm -hmm. And Xi's goals, he made clear in a speech last December, are to bring every religion in China, and I'm not talking just about Catholic, but Catholic, Protestant, Muslim, Taoist, Buddhist, under the direct control of the Chinese Communist Party, and make it serve his own purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the leader of China, who just uh, installed himself as dictator for life at the 20th Party con Congress, it was an amazing show of unity among the hundreds of puppets who sat there and raised their right hands mm -hmm. uh, and clapped in unison to make sure that she knew that they, they liked him because otherwise they'd be dead men walking. Right. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. Xi Jinping has said that any religion that does not teach its members to love the party and to love national socialism is a backward religion, backward religion, engaged in illegal religious activities and must be stamped out. Mm -hmm. So, so look, the, 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 the Chinese Communist Party's goals here are very clear. Uh, they want to stamp out the underground church, and, and of course, they've, uh, they've used the agreement to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. They want to co opt the visible church to promote the party line and national socialism and Sup Supreme Leader Xi Jinping. Its long-term goals here are to decapitate the church hierarchy while slowly strangling the church out of existence. And how are they decapitating the church hierarchy? We've already talked about the fact there are 100 Cs in China. Uh, about a third of them are empty. At the current pace of Episcopal appointments, you mentioned six, mm. uh, they will not only not fill those 33 empty seas, there will be more and more empty seas each year because the average mm. age of Chinese bishops, the patriotic church is in their 60s. They'll be retiring at the rate of three, four, five a year. Uh, China, the Chinese Communist Party is only appointing one, maybe two. Mm. So what is that? That is a slow rolling effort to decapitate the Catholic Church in China and ultimately leave them with no bishops, except a couple who are actually yeah. you no know, Communist Party members. Nina, what you said a moment ago, and what I hear Stephen say here, it does remind me of what Cardinal Zen said, sitting in the chair you're sitting today, and it almost makes me want to punch a hole in this table, because he warned everybody as he sat there mm -hmm. that if you sign this agreement, you're selling out the yeah. Chinese people and the gospel, more importantly, the gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile, how do you think these officials reconcile the distortion and twisting of the gospel being used as a vehicle mm -hmm. to promote a political agenda and Marxism, mm -hmm. no less? Yeah, well, the church has come directly under the control of the United Front of the Communist Party now in China. So it is being used for propaganda purposes. And that's one of the worst things of this agreement that the underground has is being rounded up and they're being tricked. The, the secrecy of the contents of the agreement is being represented, misrepresented by the Chinese government as a requirement to join the patriotic United Front controlled church. Mm. And so maybe some of these priests uh, think that this is what the Pope wants. And um, it's not. The Pope has, the, the Vatican has said, you don't have to do this um, if you have a conscience a conflict. And um, so it's being wiped out. It's being crushed. That was the alternative. That's the way to go if you don't have an agreement, to go all in on that. Instead, uh, the Vatican does not say a word. It's silent about the fact that the head of its underground seminary is now disappeared into detention. He was arrested under this agreement, uh, uh, you know, a year or so ago. So it's... Um, I had not heard that. That's yeah, just shocking. This is Bishop Zhang. Yeah. And um, so he... Uh, uh, you know he's he's gone, and uh, the church is 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 uh, cr being crushed. Also, there's not going not only there's not going to be any bishops in a couple in a generation. No faithful. Not, there's not going to be any faithful. Right. You're, uh, you're killing children, the church. Yeah, if the, children just can't. what Cardinal Zen said. Mm -hmm. The Vatican's suggesting, however, that this agreement is not primarily about diplomatic relations with China. Rather, in the words of Cardinal Paroline, quote, it mainly concerns aspects that are essential to the daily life of the church in China. I'm thinking, for example, of the validity of sacraments celebrated. Mm 
and the certainty for millions of Chinese faithful that they will be able to live out their faith in full Catholic communion without thereby being suspected of not being loyal citizens to the country. Nina, the CCP issued regulations on religious affairs back in 2018. Mm -hmm. It required Catholic priests who minister in China to legally sign away any allegiance to yeah. the church and to sign support for the Communist Party of China. Correct. Th th they are only allowed to minister in government-sanctioned places. Minors under 18 may not enter that church. How is it possible to live out full Catholic communion under these circumstances? Quickly. Well, I think that the only way you can do it is outside the official churches at this point. It's it's going to be very tough. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they say it's not about diplomacy, but yet when you read their their statements over and over again, they're emphasizing that they just want to stay in the game. They want, the, that is the Vatican. They want to keep diplomatic. You know, the Pope said to Reuters last July that this is the art of diplomacy, the, the art of the possible, the, the diplomatic art of the possible. Yeah. And that Cardinal and, Zen was and, and it's always speaking out to it's always, yeah, it's always in the future, you know, that mm -hmm. this is going to bring fruit. And, in fact, you know, I'm not sure it is continuing, like Cardinal Paroline said. There haven't been any Episcopal appointments in the last year, well, for uh, a year. So, it is bearing fruit for the Chinese Communist yeah. Party. I think it's, yeah. the fruit is abundant. In an interview published on the Vatican media, uh, in the Vatican media, rather, on Saturday, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, the prefect of the Congregation for Evangelization of People, he defended the Vatican's decision to renew this provisional agreement with China, uh, saying the Holy See signed the agreement, quote, and Steve, I want you to react to this, to safeguard the valid apostolic succession and the sacramental nature of the Catholic Church in China. And this can reassure, comfort, and enliven, enliven, baptized Catholics in China. Stephen, your appraisal of that statement. Well, I just don't think that uh, the good Cardinal Tagle really understands what's happening in China. They are now writing sermons for priests and pastors in China to give, uh, as sermons that conform to the line of the Chinese Communist Party and, of course, uh, demote God to, uh, to second place, and he should be in first place. Now, they've rewritten the Bible, changing key passages so that, for example, in the story of the woman caught in adultery, uh, after uh, Jesus actually uh, convicts the others of their sins and they drop their stones and go away. In the Chinese Communist Party version of the Bible, Jesus then stones the woman to death himself. Can you imagine how horrific it is to have to sit in a Catholic church in China and hear these passages r r read and, and hear these sermons given? Uh, it's not promoting the life of the church in China by any mm -hmm. means. When asked for his response to critics who say the Holy See's dealings with China have led to the Vatican's silence on the sufferings of Chinese Catholics, Cardinal Tagle said, quote, in dialogue, the Holy See has its own respectful style of communicating with representatives of the Chinese government, but which never ignores and indeed always makes present the situations of suffering Catholic communities, which sometimes arise from inappropriate pressures and interference. Nina, your reaction to this? Um, yeah, that is a wild understatement of what's happening. It's incorrect. They're being persecuted. They're being restricted, suppressed. The faith is being crushed. And uh, they're doing it in um, high-tech ways that blanketed with surveillance, uh, social credit scores where they're denied uh, opportunities in the country, even an opportunity to get on a fast train or to uh, get an apartment, yeah. um, you know, as a, as a punishment. And some are being put in these uh, black jails and indoctrinated with communist thought. So um, that's a, a wild understatement, and, it, and that's one of the worst parts of the, this agreement and the Vatican's agreement to be silent and to praise and to actually have its um, officials, like the cardinal that you just yeah. quoted, um, praising the Chinese, giving them credit. Uh, it covers up the atrocities that are going on, even in the wider, uh, as well in the wider community, mm -hmm. of the genocide of Uyghurs, the right. forced organ harvesting, forced abortions, forced sterilizations in mass numbers. They are absolutely silent about this. And um, the world is unprepared for what China wants to do, which is to uh, impose its order and its system on the rest of us mm -hmm. to destroy the world order that has existed from World War II that's been led by the United States in the name of uh, freedom mm. and uh, non-aggression yeah. um, and sovereignty. And human rights and, and, and human freedoms. Yes. All that shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Stephen, 
the, the Cardinal Tagli there says this is a deal of mutual respect. Your thoughts on that, and what do you think he's referring to as inappropriate pressure and interference that causes uh, the suppression of these communities, essentially? Well, I suppose that Cardinal Tagle is suggesting that we should all just be quiet and and, uh, and and not say anything about the agreement, despite the obvious uh, fact that it is not working to protect the faithful in China. I think the thought of the Vatican early on was that, yes, uh, the church is being persecuted outside the walls of the church, but if we can get the Chinese Communist Party to agree that inside the walls of the church, people will be free to worship and practice their faith, uh, we will achieve something. In fact, they're not free inside the walls of the church. Mm -hmm. And much of what happens in China depends on the character of the leader. And we now have mm -hmm. a dictator in China who is, who is again, uh, like Mao Zedong, who's determined to be dominant in all areas of life. And his right-hand guy, just to give you one example, his right-hand man now, Xi Jinping's new right-hand man, is the former head of Shanghai, the same local tyrant who locked mm -hmm. down 26 million Shanghainese for a couple of months over a few cases of COVID. Why? Because Xi Jinping told him to do so. It was a loyalty test, and the guy who was most loyal and most cruel to his own people, 26 million people of Shanghai, mm -hmm. got promoted to be Xi Jinping's right-hand man. Uh, High-tech tyranny in China is getting ever more sophisticated. You know, in the old days, the Chinese officials in the villages used to say, Say, uh, the emperor, you know, the mountains are high and the emperor is far away, so they could run their local affairs. Uh -huh. uh, today, Xi Jinping is only as far away as your nearest smartphone, which of mm -hmm. course is always watching, listening, and tracking people. Uh, so Nina mentioned the social credit system, the surveillance cameras, and, and that is applied uh, with double vigor and double, double zeal to Catholics mm -hmm. in China, who are automatically suspect of being unpatriotic because of their loyalty, at least the head of their church, uh, lives outside of China mm. in Rome, Italy. I, I, I want to move on, Nina, to an article you wrote. You referenced it a moment ago uh, in the National Catholic Register. Uh, at, at, at last week's 20th Chinese Communist Party Congress, President Xi cemented his power with the third term, vowed to double down on what he calls socialism with Chinese characteristics. And he went on to say, quote, Marxism is the fundamental guiding ideology upon which our party and our country are founded and thrive. How should you, the U.S. respond to this? Well, one thing it has to do is make sure we don't imitate them or allow that their agents inside our country, as they are now doing, mm -hmm. to uh, intimidate and, uh, you know, uh, kidnap people around the world. An NGO in Spain just came out with a, a stunning report, right. um, Raymond, that says that almost a quarter million uh, Chinese nationals have been uh, abducted and taken back or persuaded to go back to China for punishment. Oh. And uh, the Justice Department just this week brought another case against some of them. Yes. And there is another case the Justice Department brought that... And these um, are these overseas police stations yes. of China mm -hmm. in, in other Outpost. countries. Yes. And I'll let you comment on that in a moment, uh, Stephen, but go on, finish. Yeah, up. so so there were... Uh, one of the Justice Department cases uh, arrested Chinese for um, uh, agents of the CCP for trying to in stop and intimidate... Uh, protesters along the Olympic torch route in the United States because it could embarrass China. Hmm. So this is what's going on under our nose here and on U.S. campuses, college campuses, with the Confucius Institutes, and sometimes they've changed their names. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a terrible situation. We have to stop, um, stop this, stop them, and we have to prepare and understand what the nature of this regime. Mm. Stephen, your reaction to all of this uh, and your thoughts about... They are, you mentioned it a moment ago, the Chinese have become so sophisticated in their surveillance, the ability of their intelligence to reach out. Uh, I had an intelligence uh, agent tell me, oh, a few weeks ago, that um, he has concerns that they may have reached all the way, not only into our own country and our own government, but to the Vatican as well. Your thoughts? Oh, I think that they're, they're, they're trying to pry secrets out of governments everywhere in the world. And having been in, as you have, inside the Vatican and seen people on their, uh, no, 1999 computers <laughs> and even in some cases using old typewriters, uh, it wouldn't be difficult, I think, to penetrate whatever firewalls the Vatican has put up. Mm. Uh, China's very sophisticated in stealing intellectual property uh, in cyber attacks. And I have no doubt that uh, they know, they know per perhaps before... Uh, uh, the Vatican officials themselves, what what is being uh, what is being discussed mm. in Vatican circles, 
Wow. Um, very good at that. And, and the other thing about, about the Chinese Communist Party is, is, like all communist parties, it is a missionary party. It wants to spread its ideology throughout the world. And, and the Chinese Communist Party particularly thinks that the world is simply not big enough uh, for two different systems. It is not big enough for the system that we set up after World War II, led by the United States, and the system run by the Chinese Communist Party of a one-party dictatorship. And they are determined, at the end of the day, they believe that only one country, one system will be left standing. Their 100-year plan, which is supposed to reach fruition in, in, in 2049, uh, says that they will be the dominant power on the planet. They will be economically dominant, politically dominant, and military dominant. And uh, and, and we have to make sure that we understand that China is at war with us uh, across all dimensions, except the kinetic. They're not firing bullets at us, mm -hmm. but they're at war with us in cyberspace. They're at war with us in economic terms. And uh, we, we, the last thing we want is to be in a, another Cold War. But if your enemy is at war with you, then you're at war whether you want to be or not. Yeah. Raymond. Nina, I'm going to give you the final comment here. Why? I, I ask this almost every time we, we entertain this question. Why, given all the carnage, given the destruction of church property, mm -hmm. the contraction of the people in the pews, mm -hmm. and the en enslavement and jailing of faithful Catholic bishops and priests, why would the Vatican once again sign this deal with China? What are they getting out of it? Um, it's hard to know. Uh, there may be various reasons, but what they don't really understand is that there is a war of ideology being waged by Xi Jinping and the Communist Party of China, and that they're on, they're they're siding with on that side. They are not fighting back for religious freedom or for human rights and human dignity. Okay, we will leave it there. Nina Shea, Stephen Mosher, thank you both for being here. Uh, I want to remind you, uh, Stephen's book. Bully of Asia is the definitive work on China's plan for global dominance. It's available at bookstores everywhere. You can also find Nina Shea's great work at the Hudson Institute.org, correct? Correct. Thank you. All right. Thank you both.